Hi everybody. So we're in the garden today. Um, we already went out and um, raked hay for today and we had our booth up. It's Sunday. Uh, and now I'm in the garden getting our tomatoes in finally. Um, I'm glad I waited. I was kind of panicking because I felt like I was behind. Um, but Thursday morning we had some really cold weather come through. <clears throat> And um, some people were saying they lost their tomatoes or peppers, so I'm really glad I, I waited. Um, that being said, last year I had a big problem with blossom end rot. Um, if you don't know what blossom end rot is, it's when the bottom of the fruit it can happen to peppers um, and tomatoes, and I think there's a couple others. Um, the bottom of it turns black and starts to kind of shrivel up um, on the end that the blossom would have been on. So that is a lack of calcium and possibly phosphorus if i recall um so the problem with our soil here is um again this garden bed was new last year so it needed a lot of amendments uh but unfortunately i just didn't get the amendments in before i had the problem with the blossom end rot when you have um, blossom end rot you have to remove all of the existing fruits off of the plant and hope that it doesn't um, continue on with the new fruits that will come on after the blossoms. That being said, you also have to treat heavily with a calcium and phosphorus fertilizer. Of course, we use all natural things here, no chemicals, no nothing like that. So you're looking at um, bone meal or blood meal are two really great sources of, um, of those two things. And uh, of course, I like a good old fish emulsion as well. Um, currently I am planting my tomatoes and I'm going to show you a couple cool tricks. You're going to have to go get more water. She's watering them right now. So the first trick that I want to show you, these are things that I'm just trying. I am obviously going to treat all of my beds heavily with, um, bone and blood meal. I'm actually putting blood meal in the, um, in the hole as I'm doing it, but I'll show you that here in a second. Um, the first trick that I'm trying with some of my tomatoes are eggs. So the thinking here, and some people say yes it works great, some people say no it doesn't, it's stupid to do. We're going to give it a try. Shells on eggs are calcium. So this is a fantastic source of calcium. That being said, some people say that it takes years for the calcium in a shell to break down enough to actually be usable for the tomato. The other thing is the inside of the egg, you have, um, <laughs> you have your, your, you know, yolk and your white, um, which when it breaks down would be a good source of, um, all kinds of nutrients, but it will also have the phosphorus that you need. This is why a lot of times people will put half of a fish down in the ground. Um, there's also ways that you can use uh, food scraps, coffee grounds, things like that. Uh, you have to dig a super deep hole. Um, I haven't done that. I'm not doing that yet this year. I'm going to try these couple things first. So this is the first trick and I'll show you what we do to get that in there. Um, and then the second trick, it may not count as organic, but I don't think there's anything in it that's bad. Might be some dyes in it. I might not use the red ones, the pink ones. Anyways, good old fashioned antacid tablets. These ones are just a couple dollars for uh, 72 of them um, at the old Dollar General. And these are a thousand milligrams of calcium. It's pure calcium. So when you dig that hole, and you go ahead and you stick one of these down in there. We're going to try to crush it up, break it up a little bit, to help the decomposing process here. Um, that's calcium. So these are the two tricks that we are going to try. I'm also going to come through here and, um, like I said, I'm going to broad fertilize over the top with stuff. Um, and then at the end of the year, before I close up the garden for the year, I'm going to use a nice organic garden lime because that is a good source as well to help you with your pH, but it will also help you with your calcium. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna show you what this looks like. Okay, so the first thing we're doing is digging a hole. This is a pretty deep hole. Um, now my plant starts aren't 
massive, but when you're planting tomatoes, you want to plant them deep. And I'll, I'll show you why here in a second. But So we're getting a nice deep hole here. Okay. Now she's going to crack the egg. You want to crack it. You, you can put it in their hole, but I want to crack it and crunch up their shells pretty good. Okay. And I'm just going to put a little bit of dirt on top of that. Nah, you have failed. It's fine. It's going to get broken up anyways. I don't know if you guys can see in the hole. Just a little bit. Now I'm taking just a wee bit. Not very much. Of the blood meal. It's a slow releasing blood meal. Um, here we go. And then we're going to put in our tomato plant. Now I'm going to give. Now this one, I did top this one. For some reason, it still only put up one liter, so I'm not real sure about that. But, anyways, um, this is coming up beautiful. It's got a nice thick stem on it. You want to plant it about this deep because all along the stem of the tomato it'll put out roots so you want to put it very very deep because then it'll come up super good and strong so we're going to put that in there mm -hmm. try to keep the rocks out and there you go what yeah that's it that's how we're planting them okay show you one other trick that we are trying this year last year I mean everybody deals with hornworms or other pests in your garden that are less than desirable um, again you know trying that rooster was on a mission anyways trying to make sure that we use you know minim minimal intervention as possible for pests I'm doing a lot of co-planting this year and so there's a lot of plants that work very very well together so this year um, one thing that I'm trying in our rows here um, I'm going these are spaced 10 feet apart so I'm doing uh, tomato tomato marigold tomato tomato basil cinnamon basil actually tomato 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 basil Back to the tomato, tomato, marigold, tomato, tomato, marigold, so on and so forth to fill up the rows. The reason why, in theory, is that pests will gather on a plant that they prefer, that they like. You know, those things that they feed on naturally and they'll go plant to plant, just like, you know, moths and butterflies do to pollinate these animal, these critters, these pests will go plant to plant to feed and you know fill themselves up basically but what happens is when you plant something intermixed with it that they hate they're going yum yum oh this is terrible and they leave that's the theory we're gonna give it a try I'm sure I'll report back to you many times with how this is going but hopefully this works out well and I mean I love cinnamon basil and who doesn't love a beautiful marigold so we're giving this a try also, you can see my tea posts are set up. We're going to have two rows of plants here in each row. Um, and we're going to do a Florida weave. So right now, because my plants are so tiny, um, we are going to just plant them and not do anything. But once they reach about a foot to 18 inches high, we're going to come through here with the plastic baler twine. Um, it works best because it doesn't like break down with the UV rays and it doesn't, um, you know, rot with rain. So what we're going to do is we'll come down, we'll attach it to the top T post up there. Okay, we'll tie it off tight and we will run straight down along all of these T posts. Then we'll dally off there at the end. And then on the way back, what we'll do is we'll go, so you can see here, we'll go around this one around this one, around this one, around that one, the whole way up. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna weave it in and I'll show you guys the process when we do this. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna hold the plants tight without breaking them um, up vertical. And as they continue to grow, you just keep going with another row of twine back and forth, back and forth. And these plants, because they're indeterminate tomato plants, will grow to the top of these tea posts, which are five and six feet out of the ground. And they'll probably come down a little bit and, and hang down. 
But the beauty of this system is that we will be able to prune it and keep the airflow going through it so that we won't have to deal with things like blight. Um, and, and it'll just be a lot healthier for the plants. This is the theory. Let's hope I stick with it <laughs> because I don't stick with weeding very well. I try, you know, there's other more important things to do sometimes than weeding. It's going to be a basil next. What did you do? Nothing. I'm playing. Okay, put back. All right, I'm going to catch up with this and we'll catch up with you here in a minute. Something else I want to show you guys, if you can see it on the camera. Mm, let me find a good one. I don't know if you can see. This little guy here. Look here. Here. These are all volunteer tomato plants from the tomatoes that we grew last year. And there are so many of them. And I kind of hate pulling them out, but I have to. Um, but I think what I want to try to do is try to still grow some of them because I would really like to seed save from them. Because if you can get something to overwinter and come back, that means that it's going to do really, really well in your environment and in your soil. And, you know, sometimes those types of things actually do better than the things that you, you know, buy in a seed packet because they're used to your isolated area. So I kind of think I would like to grow a couple of these. I, I remember vaguely what was in each area. So I think I want to try to, like this area here, I remember was Marianas Peace. Up here was Blue Beach. That's a beautiful paste tomato, which I didn't even grow any of this year. So I think I'm going to try to isolate some of those little volunteers and try to grow them out. I'm going to hate pulling these suckers out as they grow because there's literally hundreds of them. <laughs> Oh no, you ran out. They're watering my plants. I made that watering nozzle. Yeah, Harley 3D printed. If you guys have uh, if you guys have these old antique galvanized waters, I mean, those are the best waters. Here, let me see this nozzle. Um, let me know. She 3D printed this. It goes right on there and it has a beautiful pour. Uh, and even though that one doesn't thread on there, it kind of just more or less just like slides right on and kind of fits. No one's a new one. With uh, let me know if you guys would be interested in those. If you guys have any old uh, galvanized um, watering cans laying around without the nozzles. If you guys want some of those, the, the kids will 3D print them and we can stick them on the website. Uh, Anarchy Acres Farmstead's website. So. Let me know if you are interested in those in the comments down below. Okay, don't push it on. I'm going to get off of here because I have so many tomatoes to plant. We have like 200 tomato plants. Uh, I, uh, 200 tomato plants is a lot. But we make a lot of sauce, salsa, and we sell at farmer's markets. So it is worth it to have. Uh, so let me know in the comments down below. Have you ever used the antacid tablets? Have you ever used the egg trick? Have you ever put a fish in the hole? I want to know your tomato tips and tricks down below because everybody else is going to learn from the comments as well. And I am too. Uh, if you plan on trying any of these tricks, let me know that too. And keep me posted on how it's going because I would really love to know. I think that pretty much wraps it up for today. I'll catch you guys up with how the gardening is in a few days. Uh, we are going to be back to baling hay this week. So it's going to be another busy one. That's what it's all about, right guys? <laughs> I, I guess we'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and share. See you guys.